The disbandment of SARS is creating a vacuum, says Acting Inspector General of Police, IGP Al Khali Usman Baba. And opposition party PDP says President Buhari is mortgaging our children's future with reckless borrowing. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Annako. Acting Inspector General of Police, IGP Al Khali Usman Baba, has stated that the disbandment of the Special Anti Robbery Squad, SARS, has created a vacuum in the efforts of the Nigeria police to tackle insecurity in the country. Lamenting that the repercussion of the end SARS protest, he said the regular policemen and women have not been able to immediately fill the vacuum created by the disbanded SARS, even though he said efforts are ongoing to train them for a new role. Well, joining us to discuss this is Lawrence Alobi, former Commissioner of Police in the FCT, and Andy Akwotive, a social reformer. Uh, thank you, Andy, for joining us. Yes. Great. Andy, uh, let, let's talk about how the police is in Nigeria. I mean, we all have had our reservations or our brush with the police, either whether it was SARS or it was the IG special squad. I mean, there's so many different units right now in the Nigeria police force, but... The job of the police generally is to fight crime and criminality. This is their mandate. They're supposed to police and protect us. Um, but then, of course, the SARS department, which was uh, um, labeled a, a rogue police unit, which, uh, you know, caused us to, a lot of Nigerians to feel the streets in protest last year, um, apparently had been disbanded. But now the IG is saying that the vacuum that they're creating is... Um, causing them to not be able to fight on a scale that they would want to. So I'm wondering, um, is the IG trying to resuscitate or revive SARS? Is he telling us that um, these men and women can be brought back together to form that same unit that we were speaking against? So Marianne, first of all, um, I would like to say that the police is a reflection of um, what really is ailing Nigeria um, is a reflection of the fact that um, we are never serious with dealing with issues that are able to take us on our knees consistently. Um, this, for me, is an admittance of uh, ineptitude. I'm, I'm going to be really very mild and gentle with my words because, Miriam, I feel really very annoyed, very, very annoyed. The Constitution did not recognize any special anti-robbery squad. The Constitution recognized the creation of the Nigerian police force charged with certain responsibilities that are very clear even to the blind and audible to the deaf. And in the process of administering or implementing all of those rules that were given them by the, by the Constitution, I understand that they would establish structures that should help them carry out those rules. And they're still there. But telling us that indeed they are unable to, you know, or that they feel that there is some lacuna there's some vacuum created by, you know, the disbandment of the SARS and, and speaks to a lot of issues around incapacity, speaks a lot to a lot of issues around um, the fact that we are not decided about what we really want to do with the Nigerian police force. And for people like us, it, 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 I'm careful with the words I want to use tonight, Maria. For people like us, it just tells us that this house indeed is falling. It's falling because we are admitting that we can no longer do what our responsibilities are. Imagine, for instance, that you went to a teaching hospital and the new CMD is saying to you that because of the fact that there are certain nurses that were created to take care of certain responsibilities, he won't be able to attend to patients in the manner and in the way that he was attending to patients before. 
how would this come across to you as a Nigerian or as a patient? It behoves him as the CMD of the hospital to create structures that can help him carry out the responsibilities as had been handed over to him. Mm. This exactly is what we are talking about. And this is why some of us are thinking that this Nigerian state is becoming something else, Marianne. Well, we're joined by uh, I, uh, former um, CP uh, Commissioner of Police, uh, Lawrence, for, he was the Commissioner of Police for the FCT. He's retired now. Um, um, let me start by making reference to what the IGP said. He made an assertion that the NSAS protest had put a dampener on the morale or the morale of regular police personnel. Um, so how does the demand for by the public for um, some form of reformation of the police force, a demand for people to people who are supposedly armed by the law to protect and serve, who have become a rogue unit, a demand that that unit be disbanded and those people be reoriented or, or some of them be put behind bars to make sure that they do not feel our police system. How does that become a problem for policing? Because they're saying that Nigerians shouldn't have protested. Is that what he means? That we shouldn't have protested against the fact that these rogue police units existed and the, the things that they were doing, the fact that they were killing people, they, they were extorting from people, they were targeting young, successful Nigerians. Uh, is the IGP insinuating, um, Mr. Lobby, that we shouldn't have protested? and that now we're not allowing the police officers to do their jobs. Is that what he's saying? You see, you see, you see unfortunately in this country, everyone wants, everyone wants, to, everyone wants to know that feels that he knows something about police operations. Everybody wants to come and dictate and dictate for the police what, it, what ought to be. Every profession has, has, has its methodology and principles and strategies on how to achieve results. Security, security is critical and fundamental for the protection of life, life and property, mental and public peace and security. And there must be police have strategies. Like you now, you're a journalist. You have a system that you develop. We're writing a speech. You want to interview, a, you want to interview a, an individual or personality. You have a strategy. I cannot come and dictate to you how you should go about your duty. The point is that Nigerian police come up with strategies where they can cop crime, maintain law and order, prevent crime. But the public just come and act of sentiment. Uh, again, of, uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to speak over you, but every single government entity, especially a police unit or the police force in itself, whatever modus operandi, whatever rules and regulations, whatever strategies they decide to employ, they all have to be done within the confines of the law. Isn't that supposed to be the case? Now, if they okay, do, I, if they do err on I the side of the this. law and I it keeps happening over and over I again, should we not, me, as the me. public, query it? If you don't mean to talk, I'll cut off. If you don't mean, if you don't mean to come to my head, I'll No, 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 no. I, I'm just following up. Uh, Mr. Lawrence, I'm just following up on me. what you, you said. Let me, let me finish what I was saying. Don't just cut me off. Well, I, I, well, I have a right to ask you a follow-up question. You said that you have yeah, a strategy. I'm not even finishing what I was saying. Go he ahead. Interjected. I'll have to let me finish what I'm saying. So go I ahead. Understand myself. Okay, go ahead. Now, what is, oh yes, we are, we are, we are dialogue, we are well, I'm giving you time to go so ahead, yes, and you're still yes, arguing. Yes. Make your point. No. What I'm, the point I'm making is that every strategy, every organization, every institution has program strategies on how to function. The police will come out with strategies on how to check, to segment crime, prevent crime, and on protect law and property and public peace and security. And then, let me one thing in this country is that we talk about freedom, freedom, freedom. We don't talk about our obligations as citizens. Our up to 24 years, the Constitution provides that every Nigerian citizen has a duty. We have to assist the law and order. When the police are working, when there's high crime in the, on the, in the country, whom do they call police? When police come out with strategies, the point is that what we should answer, let those strategies well supervised, well organized. When you say you face, you face SARS, SARS are meant to prevent crime and to handle violent crime. When you say about this roadblock, roadblocks have a Effective use if they are properly supervised and coordinated. For instance, 
If somebody moves out with a car, you go and kidnap somebody with arms in his car, and the police checkpoint stops him, or military checkpoint, or civil defense stop him and search him and cut those arms. One, they have been able to detect crime, they have prevented, prevented crime, and they put, put life on property, put, on, they put life on property. You know, those arms could have been used on some on innocent citizens. But they all inform, oh, scrap roadblock, scrap roadblock. What we should emphasize is let this roadblock be properly supervised. Let us have the police to provide. That's the important thing. Okay. Because if you if you scrap this then, then it's likely it's left it's left in the house of criminals. Okay. Like now, some state some 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 when police have been attacked and um, their arms killed and their arms looted. You know, the, you know the Nigerian one anarchy. When have you, when have you, when have you gone to the street? What is, what is civil, civil society? Well, uh, have you CP Lawrence, I've been waiting for you. Not, I've been Nigerian, waiting for you got, to. Not, I'm sorry. Nigerian. I apologize once again. I've, I've been really earnestly waiting for you to make that point, but I, I'm going to ask that question again. You're advocating that you're saying, of course, I totally agree with you. The police has its duty, its job cut out for it. Yes. Look, and you're yes. asking that it be supervised. I'm, I'm going somewhere, that the, it be properly supervised. It's been years. I remember when SARS started, when this whole issue started. I lived in Port Harcourt for six years. We started a campaign on the radio because people kept complaining about a rogue police unit just kidnapping people from off the streets and taking them to a place and, and forcing statements out of them. If there was proper supervision, all of these things that happen to random people, people's children being killed and thrown into a, a lake in some place couldn't have happened. So again, the dysfunctionality that's happening in the police force that is done outside of the law that actually super supervises the policing in Nigeria, should the Nigerian people be blamed for it or shouldn't it be the police that takes the blame for that dysfunctionality? I agree with you. I have said time with that number. If your effective provision has gone down the drain in the police, and that is that I can say it only equivocally. What when I left the force, I left the I retired, I retired 40, 40 years ago. I know how I was doing my I was doing my my duty. I work with a passion, right? But now most young ones out there that did it is no longer there. That's the point. It is effective of the supervision. And now this idea has come out with, with strategies to have that. These roadblocks or these this, this strategies are going to be effectively, effectively supervised. Every, in every institution in Nigeria is a stable system. You go, to, you go to the hospitals, go to schools, go to everywhere. Or it's only the police or the police being magnified. Everywhere is all there's, there's failure, failure, there's failure in all institutions. We don't play, play, play to the gallery. Okay. All institutions go to education, go to health, go to public service, go to the ministry. Everything is failure on everything because the moral, those moral values that guided our action, those ethical values have been eroded. Interesting. I want to bring, I want to bring um, Andy back into this conversation. Andy, I, I asked him a question earlier on about the assertion that the NSAS protest put a dampener, this is what the IGP said, put a dampener on the morale of men and women of the force. And I, I'm going to ask you the same question. How does protesting against injustices and people taking advantage of a badge and a gun to perpetrate all forms of wickedness on innocent Nigerians um, amount to dampening of a morale of people who truly are supposed to protect and serve us? Uh, Marianne, that's going to be the most difficult question that uh, I think will be um, so difficult that uh, if you asked it in a jam, um, a lot of us are not going to be able to answer it correctly. Um, that question should not be to me because I, I can't wrap my mind around it. How that the structure was established in the first instance by the Nigerian police force to fight against crime. They established the structure. The structure is not in the constitution. The structure did not come from heaven. The structure was established by them. If we have discovered now that the structure is failing, or there are certain things in the structure that runs foul to the constitution, to morality, to good conscience in the society, and we have asked that the structure should be pulled down. Can this same police force not create another structure, create another system, create another process within itself to be able to handle that which the constitution has said they should do? 
The constitution did not say that doctors should police Nigeria. The constitution did not say nurses should police Nigeria. The constitution did not even say the military should police Nigeria. The constitution says that the police force should police Nigeria. And it behoves them to draw up systems and structures that, if properly monitored, should be able to deliver on the askings of the constitution. So I don't understand how that um, the fact that people um, rioted against a rogue police force, you know, that was um, um, everywhere running riots and swindling people. And, and, and these testaments are there for everyone to see, including the former Inspector General of Police. They all saw it. It's palpable, you know. Today, as we speak, they were in different states. We saw all of the, the panels that were established and all of the testimonies that came out from the panels. These things were at there. So it meant that they were not properly um, 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 monitored. They were not properly managed. They, at the time, they were running riots like... Uh, like, like cancerous cells in the body. And, and, and guess what happened? A very sensitive Inspector General of Police therefore said, no, we ain't going to have this anymore. Can we just scrap this thing and have another system? I think that what we should be talking about today is, OK, we are confronted with these challenges. What can we quickly do? What can we quickly do, given the fact that we have not um, um, uh, remove the entirety of the men and women that are in the Nigerian police force. We have not sacked all of them. What can we quickly do with their intelligence? What can we quickly do with their trainings? What can we quickly do with their capacities to be able to develop certain units like we developed that can be properly managed? But, so, uh, but Andy, but Andy I'm, I'm, I make that... Andy, I'm concerned I make as that, to... I make both I'm concerned, that word again. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm concerned as to picking people again randomly in, within the police force. And I'm not in any way in, implying that, that we do not have fine officers, uh, you know, in the police force. But what's the guarantee that we would not have another rogue, yet another rogue organization? Because with all of the, with all of the things that we've seen, the track record that has, you know, been put out there, it, it seems that there's not been a handle on things. So how are we certain that these next sets of people that you're advocating for would not be also allowed to run amok because there seems not to be uh, a, yes there might be a strategy at first there might be a training of sorts uh, and but then once these people are let into the public it seems that it's a free for all so what's the guarantee that that might not happen again well i don't i'm, I'm completely completely tired completely tired you know about everything in nigeria i kid you not you at this question you have asked the very 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 important question. What's the guarantee? What's the guarantee? What's the guarantee that it's not going to repeat itself again? What's the guarantee that it's not going to be business as usual? What's the guarantee that we'll not have a few people come up again and they'll be doing even worse than the SARS people did? For me, I think that it's about sincerity of purpose. See, uh, Miriam, I always say this. If you want to work, I know um, the, the commissioner of police that we are currently interviewing. I've followed him for a long time. If, and, and he's a good man, you know, um, he's, a, he's a very good man. He speaks very nicely. You will know that he's a finely trained man. See, Marianne, between you and I, I can tell you that if the boss wants to walk, he would walk. And the boys will know that it is not business as usual. It is just about monitoring. It is just about evaluating processes. Well, we have an you IGP monitoring unit. What does that IGP monitoring unit do? Because we have it in every state. There, there's been this IGP monitoring unit. I don't you and know, I know again, this. Marianne. You're asking the obvious questions. I don't know. Well, I'm going I'm to pose, pose the question. To on its head in Nigeria today, Marianne. I'm going to pose the question to CP, uh, former CP Lawrence Alobi again. Mr. Alobi, you, you, you heard the questions um, Andy is asking. Of course, I posed those questions to him and he's posing them back to me. What's the guarantee that the fine officers in the police force would not once again um, be stained by the rogue ones. Because the truth is that no police officer, or a few of them have been you know, um, sent off. But they're sa it's the same, the same crop of people. Is it a mindset thing? Is it, that, is it more like us, the people, influencing the police force? Because we're trying to understand. And why is it that it, it, is, it looks more like the people are the enemy here? Because... What the IG is saying is that these people have lost morale. 
And I'm thinking to myself, if you're as you, a former police officer, has a child who was kidnapped and killed because he had dreadlocks or he's driving a Mercedes Benz or he's carrying a laptop that makes him look like a Yahoo boy, would you not be, would you not be worried that maybe we're being seen as the enemy to the police force instead of them doing their job thoroughly? And why does it seem that people are being targeted? Yes, thank you. thank you very much. You see, the point is that every human being deserves to be given his or her right. And every human being too has a role, a role to play in society. Whatever capacity you, 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 you belong, you, 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 you are occupying. You see, there are some very fine police officers and there are some bad officers at every society. Even among 12 disciples of Jesus, there was a Judas. So, for the fact that some few are a bad element, the point is that issue of generalization, trying to generalize the police as an institution, right? That some member individuals are unethical in their behavior, they are unprofessional in their behavior, they are maybe found to be, to be, to be culpable in terms of corruption or extrajudicial killing. It should not mean that the whole police force should be, should be condemned. What is important is that they need training, additional capacity building. I'm also emphasize on that. The IG should emphasize on training because they need to change the attitude. When I was in the police, when I was CPF city, I tell my men, as you want your brother to start to be police in your village, if you don't have to start to you want to start to be brutalized, you don't do it in Abuja where I'm the CP. And that was the principle of hell. And it should be time to last year. If a leader emphasizes on what he wants and says this is the standard I want, and he lives by that standard, the, the, the full house will keep. Will, will keep. So, leadership of the police should also ensure the, the police should make themselves worthy, worthy of the trust of the, of the citizens by behaving in line with ethical conduct. But the point that the state itself is, it is, is, it is too toxic that it even affects what they are doing. Corruption is an, it's a, it's a, it's like a norm in Nigeria. And violence has now become a legitimate means of achieving goals in Nigeria. Watch. If a young kind of man has an accident with any, any other person, a kind of man will not mobilize, either attack the man, burn his car, or murder his vehicle. That's the culture of violence. You need to orientate Nigerians, the culture of peace and security, moral character, moral value. It's a, it's a systemic problem. Not only the police, systemic. And you talk about system and processes. Processes just based, based on rules, rules of engagement, how they're supposed to conduct themselves. It is because it is the site itself has been so toxic in terms of all negative value. So the police need a real, real reverting the police system and transforming the police system. I'm you know, I, I share with you that a policeman has power to suspect anybody. The law allows him to suspect anybody. Anybody is simply suspect to stop and search. It doesn't mean when and to start this function in line with habits of, within the, the law. What is given the law to start, not to brutalize, not to use uh, or, or not to force. But the site is that is the one that now they have seen violence. Now, what your suggestion is that is every police station that people are, are in search. Not everybody is in start. Not everybody is like the monitoring unit. But every policeman is now seen as a target. That's why their morale is being demoralized. Mass law, mass law. In the chair of motivation, talk about self esteem, motivation. Right? Okay. You All right. I, I'm, I'm going to ask you quickly because we're almost out of time. Um, let's talk about the police welfare. This is something that we really don't talk about very often. But if the police officers uh, and men were listening to the protesters in 2020 and not, you know, make it look like they were their enemy, most of the things that these people were protesting for was police welfare. They were also asking that governments start to take care of these officers so that they can also police as well. I mean, you, you keep saying that there are fine men in the police, of, you know, in the police force, but... We see so many of these people on our highways. We see them within our streets. And half the time, they're asking for handouts. They're asking for bribes. Some of them are not violent about it. They're very upfront about it. They want money. 
they're not really doing their jobs per se. I have interviewed somebody who was kidnapped and the person passed three police checkpoints. How did they get passed? Because the police officers were more interested in what they were going to get from the guy, the guy who was driving the car other than searching or being on alert. So again, what is government, what should you be, I mean, I know that you no longer work in the police, but should we not be prioritizing um, the welfare of police officers? Maybe this might be a start to making sure that we have more upright and right standing men in the police force instead of people who would go to every level to loot from the innocent Nigerians. Yeah, like I said earlier, the value system has been so bastardized. So like I said, it remains on their own segment on the segment of the We have some bad police officers. An officer who is on checkpoint is also sad and ensure that any if anybody anybody be suspects that maybe is carrying something that is criminal or maybe weapon or maybe someone kidnapped, he has out of time. But sometimes some of them they put the material gain rather than doing their job efficient and effectively. I agree with it. It does happen everywhere. People call corners, even in the everywhere, other, other, other institutions. But the point that I've said is that, again, in this country, I'm happy that they start protests and process of police reform. And police reform is not just cos cosmetic police reform. Reform that will affect their welfare, their training. Policing today, it, it is... It is technologically driven. Mm -hmm. The police look at the policeman in the U.S. and look at the policeman in, 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 in Ghana, even in Nigeria. The highest carry is either AK-47 and maybe at, 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 at maybe a walking talking, not nothing else. It doesn't arm him. It's not armed. It's not protected. It's so vulnerable. And we should think about how do we motivate the police? Mm -hmm. How do we that welfare should be concerned? Look at last time when they went to the Senate. The chief of the seven chief. Emphasis was the president was emphasizing of the military, military, military. You never mentioned that a fund for the fund for the police. So everybody, the police has no point. Okay. The police like an abandoned, like no fun. Nobody speaks to the police. The only one is that the police is the most town, town large institution in the country. All right. They don't think how how can we help the police? Okay. I have let the police, the police should know that one training. Government should put money for training. Government should put money for, for, for equipment. We have to. Money, money for technology. Because training is all, is, is, policing is not knowledge driven. Well, we have to and go. Policing, policing, to policing is knowledge-driven. Um, former uh, Commissioner of Police, Lawrence uh, Alobi, uh, he was the former CP for Abuja, that's the FCT. Thank you very much for speaking with us. And also, Andy Akosave, uh, thank you so much for speaking with us. We really Mariana, appreciate it. Mariana, I don't you. know if you can permit me to We are out of time, something. and unfortunately, we cannot do that. Uh, I'm so sorry, Andy. Uh, but of course, we will have this conversation again. Thank you, guys. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we will be speaking about what the PDP believes the Buhari administration is doing to the Nigerian children. Think of us.